Let's bring in Newt Gingrich, Fox News contributor, former Speaker of the House, and author of Trump and the American Future. Good morning to you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. How are Good you? morning. I'm doing well. Thank you. So you just heard Griff's report. They're suing Nevada. Republicans are saying fraud. It could delay the election results. They're also saying that Americans should be able to trust the election. But then you have Republicans, I mean, Democrats like Hillary Clinton tweeting this out. I fear Republican sabotage of the USPS, including slowing mail delivery, is a Trump strategy to make voting by mail more difficult this fall. Request your ballots and return them as early as you can. In your years of experience, what do you think? about these mail-in ballots? Well, and I think Hillary misses the entire point. Uh, in Nevada, for example, according to Adam Waxalt, who is an expert on this, uh, <clears throat> they're going to mail ballots to 200,000 people who, according to the post office, don't exist. They're either dead, they've moved, the address doesn't work. 200,000 extra ballots floating around out there. You're seeing it in New York right now. You have two congressional <laughs> districts that six weeks after the primary do not have, they, they haven't been able to announce a winner. Now, you get into that in terms of a presidential campaign nationwide. And I think it's been, this is going to be the most disastrous election in American history at the rate at which the Democrats are trying, frankly, to set up an ability to steal it, because I think they don't think they can win an honest election. Mr. Speaker, consider this scenario. As 538 Nate Silver brought up over the weekend, Remember, it was Senator Martha McSally who won that election on Election Day. And a week later, when they looked at all the mail-in ballots and absentee ballots, she lost by two points. Can you imagine if we thought we had one president on Election Day and we have a different one two weeks from now? This country well, would look, break in half. Look, we lived through it in Florida in a very closely contested election, and it was a total mess in Palm Beach. That's uh, one the state. Did a terrible job. Uh, and that was tense enough. I, I can imagine a circumstance at the rate the Democrats are going to try to flood the system. And by the way, this also happened in California with vote harvesting in 2018. I think there were six Republicans who had won their congressional seats on election night who lost them about two weeks later uh, as these ballots kept coming in. So I'm, I'm very concerned. And Hans von Spakovsky, who is the expert at the Heritage Foundation has 1,100 cases of vote theft. So I think this is a real thing. I think people need to be worried about it. Uh, and it tells you how polarized we are. Uh, there's even, you know, there's even one uh, apparently Democratic war game where they sat down and began to think through with Hillary's campaign manager from last time. Uh, John Podesta. What they would do under certain circumstances, uh, basically to try to steal the election if they lost it. Uh, it's a amazing things going on out there. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, we've seen delays in primaries. There was yet uh, in, in vote counting and outcomes in primaries. Uh, last night, uh, Tuesday night, was yet another primary uh, evening. And there was a big upset in Missouri where Cori Bush, who's a progressive far lefty, uh, beat 10-term Missouri Representative Lacey Clay Jr. in the Democrat primary. Now, this comes as there have been other surprises uh, over the last couple of years. Jamal Bowman won in June, a primary against 16-term uh, Representative Elliot Engel, of course, you've got the squad and others who have challenged so-called squad, uh, more establishment members of the Democrat Party. Is the Democrat Party in denial of a surge of socialists who are effectively carrying the energy of their base? I don't think they're in denial. I think they're embracing it. I think that's why you have Pelosi and Schumer behaving the way they do in Washington. Uh, I think that they, the Schumer, for example, faces the potential of AOC running against him in the Democratic primary in two years. And he is not going to move an inch to be reasonable with Donald Trump because he knows that it would kill him in that primary. Uh, I think Pelosi knows that the, the, you know, when Biden hides in the basement, it creates two vacuums, a power vacuum, which Pelosi is filling, and an idea by vacuum, which AOC is mm. filling. Uh, and I think you're seeing a Democratic Party be transformed in front of your very eyes. So uh, Dr. Jill Biden was on uh, yesterday and she was talking about how her husband, because many people are saying, what is he? Is he moderate or is he, uh, is he more progressive? And this is what she said. You know, Joe's a moderate and that doesn't mean that his ideas aren't progressive and bold and forward thinking, but he's, he's not 
someone who's left. He's not someone who's right. He's a moderate, and that's who he's always been. I think Joe has a really strong vision of where he wants to take this country, and he has a strategy and a plan, and whether it's on climate change or education or uh, the economy, um, Joe knows where he's going and what he wants to do. So not a moderate, but he does have progressive ideas. Is that appeasing both sides? And also, you know, you have Bernie well, Sanders. Well, first, first of all, yeah, first of all, she's a lot more coherent than he is. Yes, that was evident. I mean, if he could talk as well as she talks, he could come out of the basement. Uh, yeah. You know, and I think, look, I think she did a fine job. Uh, and, and I think she's, you know, being a pretty good front for the campaign. But the fact is, on every front, uh, that Biden, whether it's gigantic tax increases, or it is killing the energy industry, uh, or it is abandoning his lifelong commitment to the Hyde Amendment on abortion and going for abortion paid by the taxpayers. Every time you turn around, uh, Biden is more and more uh, the, the candidate of the hard left. And I think, that, I think he thinks that's where the energy is. And I think he knows that if he was not their candidate, uh, they would go all out to defeat him. So he's sort of caught in a trap, much like George McGovern was in 1972, mm -hmm. where if he doesn't do what the left wants, uh, he's going to lose the election. Right. And frankly, if he does what the left wants, he's probably going to lose the election. They know the America is not behind it, or else they wouldn't have panicked when Bernie Sanders was leading the charge and pushed Biden forward. But they're putting Biden out there now to pretend he's a moderate and things are going to change. Let's talk about something else that didn't get a lot of attention yesterday, but we kept an eye on it. And that is the hearing on Capitol Hill about Antifa. What's behind it? Who's financing it? I naively thought that this was going to get Republicans and Democrats on the same page like they were last week with the tech CEOs from seeing that outrage and, uh, and some unsavoriness about their direction. I was wrong about that. Democrats were in total denial. Listen. We should all join hands in, in denouncing and uh, <laughs> whatever words you want to use about violent extremism of all stripes. And I think we can all agree on that. So to constantly accuse Democrats of not caring about that is re really, uh, I, I, I can only say that you, you, you aren't listening. So I hope this is the end of this hearing, Mr. Chairman, and that we don't have to listen to any more of your rhetorical speeches. Thank you very much. I'm leaving. Throughout her remark, she still did not say a negative word about Antifa, nor has any Democrat here. Uh, they instead engage in a political game where they depend. You're welcome to say something negative about Antifa right now. I think that I've covered the subject quite well. You okay. are not listening. Okay. She declined to speak, so that is the position of the Democratic Party. Mr. Speaker, do you, do you believe this? They're like children. Sure. Look, I, I wrote a paper recently suggesting that what we're seeing is a war between two worlds. This is not a normal presidential election. Uh, you know, the, the city of Minneapolis has basically now surrendered to criminals. In fact, they just put out a pamphlet for citizens on how to be mugged uh, without endangering yourself because they, they, they don't have a police force that can achieve anything anymore. Uh, Portland is a disaster. Seattle is a disaster. The south side of Chicago is a disaster. Um, the Democrats have been consistently, as I said in my book, uh, Trump and the American Future, the Democrats have been consistently right. uh, pro-criminal and anti-police. But Mr. Speaker, uh, what I find alarming, model. what I find alarming is they don't care who dropped off the bats, the pallets of bricks, the frozen water at, at strategic sites. This wasn't this, this whole uh, racial, uh, uh, speaking up about racial inequities was swamped by this group and no one seems to care who's financing them and what they're up to. It blows my mind. Well, it shouldn't, I think you just have to relax. Look. If I showed you a lion, and you notice that the lions eat zebras, unlike the, the Lion King, uh, but you knew it was a lion, you would think, oh, it's behaving like a lion. Well, all of these Democrats are now basically owned by the left. They're not going to pick any fights. Uh, they're owned by people who are financed by George Soros. Uh, you look at the new wave of, of district attorneys who are financed by Soros, every single one of them is pro-criminal. I mean, it... 
people have, it's not sunk in yet, but we're back to the late 1960s in terms of the rising murder rates and the rising crime rates. Yep. Uh, yeah. And you see this all over the country. Uh, and of course, the, the propaganda machine of the left, which used to be the news media, is going to do everything it can to hide from it. But I think the average Americans begin to realize this stuff is dangerous. That's why so. by three to one, they don't want to defund the police. I hope you're right, Mr. Speaker, but it, it turns out it looks like the Democrats are afraid of that very mob. If you want more of this analysis, Newt's new book, Trump and the American Future, is on sale right now. Mr. Speaker, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Great to be with you.